The world is changing. Inspiration is everywhere. It has never been so easy to connect, share, and bring people together. We're learning from others and finding the best in ourselves. Challenging our beliefs. Sharing our vulnerability. Overcoming our fears. Transforming ourselves so we can transform the world. How far can we go? This is London Real. I am Brian Rose. My guest today is... This is London Real. I am Brian Rose. My guest today is David Icke, the English writer and public speaker known since the 1990s as a professional conspiracy theorist, calling yourself a full-time investigator into who and what is really controlling the world. You're the author of over 21 books and 10 DVDs and have lectured in over 25 countries, speaking live for up to 10 hours to huge audiences filling stadiums like Wembley Arena. You are here today to talk about the coronavirus pandemic, the worldwide COVID-19 lockdown, and the looming global economic recession. David, welcome back to London Real. Thanks, Brian. Great to have you here. A lot of people out there with a lot of questions. There's a lot of confusion. This is a crazy time. Uh, I wanted to start off and just say a few things as far as where we are. Okay. It's March 18th, 2020 right now. I want to throw some of my views out there, and then I want to hear your views, okay. and I want to have a good discussion about this, right. and also talk about the numbers we know so far. Um, so first of all, just as far as my beliefs, I personally don't believe the coronavirus was created by a third party. I do think it occurred naturally. I do believe in the science, and I do believe in vaccines. I'm sure we're going to talk about this. Um, I do plan on getting my flu vaccine and any future coronaviruses vaccines, although you might talk me out of it. We'll see. Um, I am now obeying the orders of the government. I'm complying with their requests for information and behavior. We're going to see what happens with that. Uh, that being said, I do believe at this point that the virus can no longer be controlled in the Western world. And as a healthy 40-something year old male, I'm prepared to get it right now, and I don't believe it's going to kill me. We just shook hands. Um, over the long term, I do think 70 to 80 percent of the population is going to get it and hopefully become immune to it. Um, but also I understand due to the safety of the elderly, and I know we're going to talk about that, and those with lower immune systems and respiratory problems, I understand and I agree with this policy of social distancing in order to flatten the curve and not to overwhelm our medical system. Finally, I just want to say I think we believe we now live in a post-coronavirus world where the virus is going to be along for a long period of time and it's going to change our behavior. Let me hit you with some stats and then we can jump into this. As of today, March 18th, there are 208,221 reported cases worldwide and 8,272 confirmed deaths. Countries like China with 81,000 cases, about 3,200 deaths. Italy, 31,000 cases, 2,500 deaths. Iran, 16,000 cases, 988 deaths. As we go down to Spain, 13,000 cases, 533 deaths. And then down into the USA with 6,500 cases and 116 reported deaths. And here in the UK, 1950 cases and 71 deaths. Stock markets in America are down well over 25% since their highs and a global recession is all but certain. Federal Reserve has cut rates to nearly zero. The US has approved a trillion dollar stimulus package. The UK a 330 billion pound stimulus package. Many industries at risk. Aerospace, travel companies, entertainment, events, retail outlets, the list goes on and on and on. I hear through my sources, we should expect military troops here in London in the next couple days on the streets. David, there's an ancient Chinese expression that says may you live in interesting times. Some say it's a curse. What do you see in the world? What are you concerned about? And do you feel for the British citizens and global citizens? Right. Well, maybe if I just put some background in place and then we can take it uh, from there. For 30 years, I've been warning people in my books and in every other way I can that this world is controlled by a cult. It's a cult that has no borders. It operates in all the at least major countries and in, in fact all the countries in the end and particular in those countries that dictate the direction of the world. 
So the cult will be at the core of the system in China. It will be at the core of the system in America, etc., etc., etc. And so what have I said in this 30 years that this cult wants? I've said, and we, I've said it in the chats we've had before, it wants to create a beyond Orwellian global state in which um, a tiny few people dictate to everyone else. I've referred to this as the Hunger Games Society. And you can picture the structure very clearly. Picture a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, you've got a tiny few enormously wealthy people that actually are um, connected to this cult. We now have a name for them. We call them the 1%. At the bottom of this pyramid in the Hunger Games Society is basically the rest of humanity that is dependent upon the 1%. And in between the two is a vicious, merciless police military state to impose the will of the 1% on the population and to prevent the population challenging the 1%. And this Hunger Games society is not classic fascism, it's not classic communism, although the outcome in terms of tyranny is the same. It is a technocracy. A technocracy is defined as a society that is uh, controlled by bureaucrats, experts, scientists, engineers, technocrats. And the ability of that situation to, um, to happen is through smart technology and AI. The idea is that everything will be connected to AI. This is what the Internet of Things is all about. And if you um, listen to the crazies in Silicon Valley, they're telling you that in the period around 2030, a, a year that keeps coming up from all directions, um, we will have a situation where the human brain will start to be connected to AI. And thus, whoever con uh, controls AI will be connecting uh, um, will be connecting and uh, driving the perceptions of humanity. And that can be done from a central point through this smart grid, global smart grid. So that's the structure that they want. They also want a society completely cashless, where everything is digital money, a single one, one world currency, which will be run through this smart grid. Now, in the same 30 years, I've been saying there are two major techniques that are being used to bring about that situation. One, I've called since the 1990s, problem, reaction, solution, where you covertly create a problem, you um, use the unquestioning, pathetic mainstream media to tell the public the version of the problem you want them to believe, and you're looking at stage two, the reaction, for fear, that's the currency of control, outrage, whatever the problem is, and either a demand from the public that something must be done, or at least an acceptance from the public that things need to change because of the problem. And at that point, those who've created the problem got that reaction openly in changes in society, offer the solutions to the problems they have themselves covertly created. And those changes, step by step, take us further and further to that Hunger Games society. There's another version, uh, which I call no problem reaction solution, where you don't need a real uh, problem, you just uh, need the perception of one, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and you still have the ability to um, provide your society changing solution. The stable mate of problem reaction solution is what I call the totalitarian tiptoe, where you start at A and you know you're going to Z, but you know if you go in too big a leap, 
people will look up from the game show and the latest Simon Cow and say, what's going on? What's going on? Because the change is so great. So you do it in as big a steps as you can towards your outcome, but not so fast or big that you alert too many people to the fact that it's a pattern. What you want people to believe is everything is random. And I have this other phrase which relates to all this, know the outcome and you'll see the journey. If you don't know where this world is being taken by this cult, then everything seems random. Coronavirus, random. Um, climate change, random. Uh, economic crash, random. But when you know where we're being taken, you know the outcome, this Hunger Games structure society, now the apparently random events become clear stepping stones to that outcome. Now, let's take all of that and apply it to the coronavirus and what's happening now and let people decide for themselves if they think that the fact that the coronavirus hysteria ticks every single box of that outcome, that goal, whether that's a coincidence. I absolutely do not believe that it is. And, you know, you mentioned that um, you don't think that it was a created virus. Um, but, but the fact is, whether it was or whether it wasn't, doesn't matter to the fact that once you you roll this out, it takes on a momentum of its own. I agree with that. And therefore, um, what is unfolding was desperately predictable. And in fact, we'll get into this as we chat, to massive 1% organizations, one in fact six weeks before this uh, virus came to light in um, China, were playing out scenarios and simulations based on exactly this scenario that's unfolding now. And what they said would happen is exactly what is happening, down to the fine um, detail. Okay, but the coronavirus but, is real and it is dangerous. You do believe that? Um, well, n not as a black and white, no. Okay, but it is real? Um, th obviously, there is a strain of this coronavirus, because there are many coronaviruses, um, which appears to be different. Um, but if you um, look in terms of the danger, the danger is to a certain section of society. Do you know, um, mainstream doctors, I watched an interview with one in America uh, only two or three days ago, and they're saying, well, look, just to put into context, 80% of people that are diagnosed with coronavirus have, and this is his quote, very mild symptoms. The ones that are in danger, and by the way, in danger from any virus, including uh, uh, the, uh, the classic flu, are those that have compromised immune systems. And they are old people, elderly people, and they are people with what is termed pre-existing uh, health problems. Why? The pre-existing health problems are putting so much pressure on the immune system, it's already weak when it's hit with this. This is why someone like that will um, have uh, uh, potentially a serious situation and someone with an immune system uh, in working order uh, of any level will just swat it away. And another point, you know, have we not learned yet to take what the authorities tell us with a pinch of salt until it's proved otherwise. Do you know, um, there was a, a lady called Dr. Deborah Blix. She's the White House coronavirus coordinator. She said in a press conference two days ago that 96% plus of those who have been tested for coronavirus in uh, South Korea were negative. And she said, and our testing results in America show about the same. And so 
when you um, uh, are in, in, a, in a massive way, you are um, diagnosing on the basis of symptoms. How the hell do you know they've got this coronavirus strain and, and, and not something else? Me, me and my son, Gareth, um, well before Christmas, both went down with, with very, very rarely ill. That's why we remember it. We both went down with this, uh, with this illness. And now, as I read the symptoms of this coronavirus strain, we had word for word, point by point, every single symptom. And that means one of two things. It means either this coronavirus strain was going around in Britain then before it had even emerged out of China, or far more likely, we got something else with exactly the same symptoms. So I would um, hold back on believing the figures. And I would also... Um, those figures uh, I mentioned, are you unsure about those? I, 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 I question any figures coming out of mainstream authority. Okay. I've been investigating uh, the mainstream everything for 30 years. And, you know, most of the time, if they ever told the truth, they would genetically implode from the shock. So I question everything. And if it stands up, it stands up. But I don't just take it because someone in a suit has told me to believe it. For instance, you know, um, in 2017-2018, uh, 45 million people got the flu in America, according to Centers uh, for Disease Control and Prevention figures. 61,000 died. Um, where was the hysteria then? 61,000 people dying. Well, they, they say that this is more dangerous and more contagious and what's potentially going to kill more people. Because well, otherwise, that's a good question, David. Everyone's <laughs> like, well, how come people aren't worried about this when the flu from 18 yeah. killed 50,000? This has only killed 8,000. The, the point is, though, the, this is the point that according to officialdom, 80% of people who get the coronavirus diagnose the coronavirus, have not necessarily all got it, um, have very mild symptoms. The vast majority of the rest have what they call moderate symptoms. And that leaves um, some with um, uh, compromised and weakened immune systems who get the serious end of it. And they get the serious end of the flu as well and, 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 and other um, uh, viruses. And these people are clogging up the Italian health system well, right now. The, Do you believe the, that's true? The point is, that what, we, what we surely should be doing is focusing on those people and doing, doing what is necessary to uh, protect them and their immune systems uh, from uh, the consequences. But to have um, the vast majority of the population who at most will have mild symptoms, some even no symptoms. I mean, I remember this story. One of the first uh, Scottish people to get the virus was interviewed on a BBC local radio station. And he said, well, uh, you know, I, I, I had a bit of a mild uh, um, uh, fever. Well, what's that? That's the immune system using heat to kill the predator. Just perfectly immune system response. So anyway, um, he says, and um, so I, I got checked out. And they said, I got coronavirus. And they said, you've got to go to hospital. He said, but... I, I, I felt all right. I had a bit, you know, I had a few aches and stuff, but I feel all right. He says, so I'll go to hospital. He said, but by the time I get to hospital, he said the symptoms are gone. And he's gone down as a statistic, coronavirus in, in, the, in the numbers. So when you've got people who are getting that on, a, even if they do get it on a vast scale uh, in terms of percentage who, who, who have that response, you get a, 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 an even greater number who, who, who don't get it. And for that, you destroy, because that's what's happening before our eyes, Brian, you destroy the world economic system. Now, let's go back to how I started. One of the things I've been pointing out as a problem reaction solution uh, that was coming to, to, to uh, transform human society, including, by the way, one of the things I said was coming in my earlier books was a pandemic. Um, because of all the boxes it ticks, 
But what I have been saying for the best part of 30 years is they are planning an enormous economic crash. And I've been saying it even more since 2008, because 2008 seemed a bit of uh, be a nightmare. The point I'm making is what they want is something that would make 2008 look like, you know, a, 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 a Sunday school tea party. And so um, this coronavirus hysteria gives the, um, the excuse to do what they're doing and the outcome and the consequences of what they're doing is to dismantle the world economic system. Now, another thing I've been saying, this Hunger Games society, I've been saying this for a long time, is designed to have no small business, no even medium-sized business, globally, just gigantic corporations that control and produce everything. Amazon is a classic example of what I'm talking about. What this coronavirus um, hysteria is creating is a situation unfolding by the hour worldwide that is destroying small business, family business, even medium-sized business, some even relatively big businesses too. It's destroying them. The, the, the big legacy of what is happening now will not be to do with health long term. It will be economic. I agree with it's you. Cat it's going to be catastrophic. Now, now, here's the point. What happens to those people whose businesses collapse? What happens to all those people who were working for those businesses? For bars, for, for, for hotels, for um, all these uh, businesses that have been targeted. Don't go there. Shut down. What happens to them? They fall into the bottom of the Hunger Games society. And, and, and what we're seeing now, every day, is this Hunger Games society coming closer and closer and closer because of what's being done in the name of protecting the people. I've got news for you. You go deep enough into this system, they don't give a shit about the people. We are being asked to believe now that this system cares about old people. We must protect the old people. We must destroy the world economy to protect the old people. Oh, these would be the old people, would they, that have paid in their entire life through taxation and other means, and at the end, in their final years, they get handed a pittance of a pension which gives them the choice between being warm or being hungry. And what does that do when people are going without essential things because the system doesn't care and, and, and uh, they, they're having to buy shite food because that's all they can afford? They, they can't have nutrients to... Um, boost their immune systems because they can't afford them and the mainstream everything's not telling them they need them anyway. And at the same time, they're breathing in shit air, drinking toxic water and other drinks, being deluged with sugar, which has a phenomenally destructive impact on the immune system. All this is going on. We're living in a... Uh, an electromagnetic, technologically generated soup of um, radiation toxicity. And this system has allowed that to happen, has allowed corporations to do that. Uh, and now, having done all that, that's devastated the lives and the immune systems of old people. We are being asked to believe that the system cares about the health of the elderly. It doesn't give a shit. And I'm not talking about the nurses. I'm not talking about the doctors. I'm talking about that at the core which is driving this. 
And, and the, the, the idea that all these things are being done to protect the elderly, they don't give a shit about the elderly. The elderly are an excuse to impose the very society that I'm talking about. Now, if you look at when these things happen and, and great uh, Orwellian, draconian things are put in place, oh, we've got to do this because of the problem. Well, the problem eventually passes. This virus will eventually flatten out. But what you see every time, 9-11 is a classic, they'll roll back some of it but not nearly rolled back to where it was before. The whole thing's moved on closer to the Hunger Games Society. Another thing you're going to see, oh, and by the way, I mentioned that um, a, a great goal of this, uh, and I've been saying this, my, when did I first write this? About 1993. They want a, a cashless society, a digital cashless society, one world currency, which has phenomenal... Um, implications for freedom. They want rid of cash. And when I said that, there was lots of cash in circulation. People going, end of cash, now look at it. And you know, what was it this guy Ted Ross, the head of the World Health Organization, a man I wouldn't trust to tell me the time in a room full of clocks, by the way. Um, he said, don't touch cash use cards because the virus can pass on through cash. I've come up here today for this chat three times in places that are always cash. I had cash turned down, now we're only taking cards. And, and when, this, when this runs on, they're going to be justifying a cashless society on the basis of this, not, this um, that you can pass viruses on through it. Um, and uh, they're going to be saying, we can't have this again. We, we, we can't have this happen again. So you're going to have more technological testing of people for whether they have a temperature and all this stuff. And the whole surveillance is going to move on, exactly as it has in China. Right. If, if people thought China had, had reached the point of beyond Orwellian, well, you just look what they brought in as a result of this coronavirus. Okay. I they, want to talk about that technology because it's a very good point. But what, now, Italy right now, we're looking at Italy, and from what we can see and hear, the hospitals are chock full of people that are dying. There's not enough respirators, et cetera. I mean, surely we must do something about this, David. I know what you're saying is that these things will pass and we're crushing our global economy, which actually has bigger implications than the health. I agree with you. This will ruin people's lives. Well, not only that, it will cause massive amounts of ill health and death. I agree with result. that too. I agree with that. It's just, it's just pushing it down further. But what about these people that are dying and clogging up hospitals and the fact that could happen with the NHS? That is a, a reality. Well, I, 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 I've, I've thought um, all along, and it seems to be the case, that the strain that is prevalent in, in um, Italy is something of a, 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 a stronger nature than, than what's generally circulating. And, and also in Iran, that's something else. Just as an aside, we, we have a country targeted by America, targeted by Israel, Iran. And as this virus um, came out of China, of all the countries in all the world, Iran got its smack worse than anyone before it started to appear in, um, in Italy. It was a little odd. And members... Uh, Could have been a coincidence. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, after 30 years, Brian, uh, coincidences um, are, are something I have to be very, uh, very well uh, persuaded because uh, coincidences don't turn out to be so. They turn out to be uh, made to happen. Anyway, uh, so not only did... Iran have this, what again seems a stronger um, strain of it, but it was killing the people within the regime at a very early stage. And, and you know, that's, that's a coincidence. How many coincidences do you want? Um, and then you have another one, you see. I, I mentioned um, that one of the problem reaction solutions that I've said in the books over the years that they were going to use to justify this Hunger Games Society was a pandemic. 
Um, you, you look at the movie Contagion, I think it was tw 2011. I watched it, it last tells, week. It, it's basically coming out of China and stuff like that. Yeah, Steven Soderbergh, it's got Jude Law in there, and yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow, it's very interesting, and very well made. Yeah, but you know, uh, you know I've talked to you in previous uh, chats about something called preemptive programming, where they, they, they preempt something to put it into the subconscious mind, even the conscious mind, through Hollywood, and then suddenly it kind of happens for real. But I, I was sent a document um, from 2010 that was published by the Rockefeller Foundation. The Rockefeller Foundation obviously is a front for the Rockefeller family, which is fundamentally involved in this global cult. Um, in fact, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers were the creators of the World Health Organization, which is there to, to control health policy and direct uh, um, the um, perception of, 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 of health in its, all its forms from a central point. You don't trust the WHO at all? Well, it's currently headed by a guy called Ted Ross from Ethiopia, who was a Politburo member in a Marxist government that's been running Ethiopia for a a long time. Uh, he was health minister and was exposed three times for covering up cholera epidemics in Ethiopia. And now he's head of the World Health Organization telling us about the coronavirus. You, you, you will understand if I don't agree uh, uh, or, or even believe a word that comes out of his mouth. See, these, or, these, these organizations are not there to serve the public. They're there to serve this um, agenda. So who, who came out? and said, oh no, don't touch cash, you pass on the virus, just, just use... Ted Ross, same, same guy. Um, he's the one that's praised China for a wonderful job they did um, with the coronavirus and, 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 and what have you. Now, this Rockefeller Foundation document um, was about a scenario involving a flu pandemic and it described what would happen, that, that, that China would um, use uh, authoritarian, draconian methods to, to, to meet the challenge. And then the West wouldn't basically start like that, but then would, would, would become the same. And, and, and this whole global lockdown was described in this document. And then we moved to six weeks before the virus came to light um, in China. And we had something called Event 201. This was a simulation of a coronavirus um, pandemic, which involved the World Economic Forum, which has its meeting every year in Davos. This is the 1%, 1% and involved the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, Bill Gates, the guy that wants to vaccinate the fricking world, and by the way, is funding the electronic tracking of people to, so that the authorities know if they've been vaccinated or not through an organization he funds called Gavi. And they ran this simulation called Event 201 in which they inserted, you know, scenario row or simulated news reports. And if you watch them, you can see it on the internet. It's just like the news reports we're seeing in the media. And they, had, they, they were discussing, OK, you know, what, what, what can we do? And, and there was a whole area of this s simulation where they're discussing how they control information. And they're saying, how do we deal with the anti-vaxxers? How do we um, make sure that the official narrative of, of the pandemic is the one that's dominating um, the internet and all these lines of communication and not what they call conspiracy theories, putting another, um, another point of view. And all these things that they talked about in this scenario have happened. We've had Facebook and Google saying that they're going to um, make sure that, um, the, first of all, the World Health Organization uh, version gets free advertisements. 
and they're going to suppress the um, the uh, other opinion, what they call conspiracies and what have you, and disinformation and fake news. Who decides if, if it is? They do. We've had YouTube this week say that uh, because they don't have the same number of staff, they're going to now um, have videos taken down purely by AI algorithms. And because of that, they say a lot more videos are going to be taken down, even those that don't um, uh, you know, break what they call community guidelines. So all th these things that were decided um, in this um, Gates World Economic Forum 1% simulation six weeks before, uh, that they should happen or happen. And that was all public information about them doing that? Or you got the report about it? Okay. No, no, no. I, I, read, I, read, right. I read the actual document mm -hmm. of the Rockefeller Foundation and its scenario, which is exactly what's played out. But um, the um, Event 201 simulation was filmed. You can see it on the internet. Okay. And now they're running that playbook right now. Exactly the same. Another okay. thing is that... Um, at the same time that that um, simulation was taking place, 10,000 military personnel and support staff were attending the World Military Games in Wuhan, China. So um, that is, I'm not, I, again, I'm not saying this happened, but what we have to put, if we're not going to be scammed uh, and just believe the official narrative, we have to explore possibilities. And, and another possibility is that that World Ga Military Games was a wonderful front to, um, to release some kind of, um, of, 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 of virus in, in, in that uh, same area. So all these things are um, something that have to be explored and put into the mix. Because what happens if you only believe the official version of everything is the official solution for the problem you believe in is going to take us further and further down the road to a society that would make George Orwell bloody wince. And all the things that I've said, this cult wants, this cult is getting as a result of this coronavirus. Okay. What do we do about this situation in Italy? Do you think it's correct to lock everybody down? You know, uh, you know, if it is this bigger strain, do you think that is the intelligent solution to ease off on the, the hospitals? Because, you know, you agree, people are dying most likely up there. What do we do in that situation? Is there a point where a big reaction is warranted? Well, Because I know you care about people, you, David. You, you have to keep the reaction in proportion to the problem. So maybe more needs doing in places like all parts of Italy. But the point is, you've got to keep your eye on the rest of it and how you can, um, you can see the world completely transformed and economically demolished by um, taking action now that will have phenomenal knock-on consequences. And so when you look in the, the global average and in most other countries, um, the number of people who are seriously affected by this against all those who are not, the way the whole economic system is being shut down is suicide. And, and what happens when it reaches a point where in its present state it cannot continue, it cannot survive, a whole new economic system comes in, which is the one this cult wants. And I'll tell you another thing. I've been going on for years and years and years about the fact that the... Uh, idea of human, human cause climate change is a joke. It's a hoax. Um, and people say, why would they hoax climate change? You look at all the solutions to climate change, and again and again and again, they are exactly the same solutions as, and consequences 
as with the coronavirus. What, what did Prince Charles say at Davos, um, only a matter of, you know, two months or so ago? He said by 2030, this year that keeps coming up all over the place from all directions, we need a new global economic system, economic order to meet the challenge of climate change. What have I been writing for 30 years? This cult wants to transform the world economic order into this technocratic, AI-controlled tyranny. And both the coronavirus and the climate change hoax are providing the, the problem, um, I would say in many ways the illusion of the problem, not least with human-caused climate change, to offer the solution of exactly what they want, which is a transformed, centrally controlled, AI controlled world economic system, which will not have mom and pop businesses anymore. Right. It won't have small businesses. Now, it wants rid of them. Now, the people in, in America, Trump and his advisors, and the people, Boris Johnson and his advisors, are going to say that the virus, since it spreads exponentially, needs drastic action now. That's what they say. We have to shut everything down so it doesn't become, you know, a thousand X in the next 14 days, which can happen with a virus, can happen with something that grows exponentially. That's true, right? You just don't believe that's the case here. What, what, what I keep coming back to is the effect on the health of the overwhelming vast majority which have immune systems that just basically slap it aside. And it's this um, small group of elderly people who for reasons I've described have weakened immune systems and those who have other health conditions and therefore weakened immune systems, they're the ones in danger. So if you focused everything on them, and if necessary, isolate them and, and focus your resources on them so no one goes hungry and no one is um, in need. But the rest of the population, 80% very mild symptoms or no symptoms, others with moderate symptoms, well, are we going to destroy the world economic system by saying that those people also have to isolate and not go to work. Yeah. And for me, that's crazy. Focus on those who are in danger. Throw everything at them. Cocoon them if necessary. But cocoon them with, um, with fairness and with compassion and with total support. But the rest of the population, I, 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 I got exactly the same symptoms, I repeat before Christmas and I carried on working weren't pleasant for two or three days cough some stuff up and all that but you get on with it and this is happening to people all the time I'll, I'll give you an analogy Brian years ago you might remember this we used to have a thing called weather and weather used to change and there used to be uh, storms and they used to be you know strong weather situations and we used to call it weather now every time that happens as it's always happened now it's climate change we're all gonna die and what we have now is the coronavirus version of that Everything is coronavirus. We don't even know if so many people have been uh, logged as having had it, actually have it. When, when you're testing, like I said earlier, on symptoms, well, these symptoms are um, true of many different things. Uh, who, who says they, uh, this person's got it or this person hasn't got it? We don't know. The point is they're not dying from it. They're not even, most of them, being affected more than... Uh, very mild symptoms. So why are we locking them away and bringing down the world economic system and destroying uh, people's businesses, livelihoods, ability to pay the rent? Why are we doing that 
and not just focusing totally on those who could have a, 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 a serious problem because of their immune system deficiencies. I don't know. And they're telling us... I'll tell you why. <laughs> because if they carried on and allowed that to happen, the world economic system would not be demolished. And the idea is to demolish it so you can replace it. Problem, reaction, solution. That's why. To continue watching the rest of the episode for free, visit our website, londonreal.tv, or click the link in the description below.